know that ions are charged atoms or molecules, but then there's partial charge, formal charge, and oxidation numbers, which are also charges. So what's the difference between these? Well, that's what I'm going to clarify for you right now. Partial charges occur when there's an electronegativity difference between the atoms in a bond. The more electronegative atom tends to create an inductive effect, which is simply the shifting of electron cloud density toward itself. So for instance, in this bond right here between the carbon and the oxygen atom, the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon. So it tends to withdraw electrons from the carbon's electron cloud. This is known as an electron withdrawing group. It shifts the electron cloud from the carbon toward the oxygen. An electron withdrawing group is also known as an electron acceptor, meaning he's accepting electrons from carbon's electron cloud, making this side of the molecule more negative than the rest of the molecule. However, Carbon doesn't actually lose electrons from its valence shell, and oxygen doesn't actually gain electrons into its valence shell. However, the carbon will become partially positive charged, and the oxygen will become partially negative charged. That's all it is to partial charges. It creates negative regions in a molecule and positive regions in a molecule, which overall creates a polar molecule. Formal charge is a little different than partial charge in that there may be a greater inductive effect occurring in the molecule. So in the previous example for partial charge, we had an oxygen bonded to a carbon and the oxygen being more electronegative had an inductive effect withdrawing electrons from carbon's electron cloud. In this example, we have a double bonded oxygen also attached to that same carbon. Well, the double bonded oxygen has a greater inductive effect because of the pi electron system, meaning the extra two electrons in its double bond. So it will have a greater electron withdrawing effect on that carbon, withdrawing electrons from the carbon, which may cause an electron withdrawing effect from this oxygen, which will then become partially positively charged. Well, the problem is oxygen that is partially positively charged will have a difficult time maintaining the bond between it and a partially positively charged hydrogen. Like charges repel. So what will happen? Well, the bond will break. And when the bond breaks, because oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, it will keep hydrogen's electron. Therefore, hydrogen will lose its electron and obtain a positive one formal charge. And in this case, the oxygen gained an extra electron to have an extra lone pair, and the oxygen will gain a negative one formal charge. So formal charge is obtained when atoms lose or gain electrons. When they lose electrons, they'll obtain a positive formal charge. When they gain electrons, they'll obtain a negative formal charge. And it's just like ions. In the previous example, we saw how formal charges can result upon bonds breaking. In this example, we're going to see how formal charges can result upon bonds forming. So we have a nitrogen bonded to three hydrogens and having a lone pair and a zero formal charge and this is the natural state of nitrogen in compounds. And we have a hydrogen that has a positive one formal charge because it has lost its electron. So suppose the nitrogen contributes both of its lone pair electrons in forming a single bond with the hydrogen. Well, what would that look like? In a way, the hydrogen will have gained its electron back therefore losing its positive one formal charge. And in a way, the nitrogen will have lost both of its electrons from its lone pair and will obtain a positive one formal charge. So in this example, upon the bond forming between hydrogen and nitrogen, the nitrogen will obtain a formal charge of plus one because it contributed both of its electrons and in a way lost its electrons to hydrogen. 
oxidation number is quite different than partial charge and formal charge in that it's determining how many electrons an atom within a compound is contributing or obtaining during bond formation. So let's look at an example that will help discern the difference between formal charge and oxidation number. And we're going to suppose we were asked for the oxidation number of phosphorus in hydrogen phosphate. Well, first notice hydrogen phosphate has a negative 2 molecular charge. Well, this is the formal charge of this compound, but it has nothing to do with the oxidation number of phosphorus in this compound. So looking at the molecule, what happened was each of these two oxygens lost a hydrogen, obtained an extra electron, and therefore an extra lone pair, and therefore a formal charge of negative one on each oxygen, which is the negative two charge of the molecule. But finding oxidation number of phosphorus means that we are trying to determine how many electrons that phosphorus either contributed or obtained while forming bonds with the four oxygens in this molecule. So to determine oxidation number, I'm going to do one hydrogen times positive one, which is oxidation number of hydrogen from the periodic table, plus one phosphorus, and I'll leave that as a variable since that's what we're solving for, plus four oxygens times negative two, which is the oxidation number of oxygen from the periodic table, and I'll set that equal to the molecular charge, which is negative two. I'll simply solve for phosphorus to get positive five, which is the oxidation number of phosphorus in this compound. And being a positive means that phosphorus contributed, or in a way lost, five electrons, in forming bonds with the four oxygens in this compound. We have one, two, three, four, five electrons that phosphorus contributes to forming bonds with the four oxygens in hydrogen phosphate. That's oxidation number. Oxidation number, once again, is not the molecular charge or the formal charge on any one of the atoms in a compound. It simply tells us how many electrons an atom contributes or obtains upon forming bonds. And if it were a negative five, that means that phosphorus will have obtained five electrons upon forming bonds in a compound. So positive, contribute, negative, obtain. Simple as that.